Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Hello, and thanks for joining me. I have a story that was told a long time ago by the Buddha. So let's get ready to hear the story and take a couple of deep breaths. As you breathe in, stretch up tall toward the ceiling. And as you breathe out, relax, let your shoulders relax. And now take another deep breath in. And breathe out. And now a question before we start our story. Can you think of a classmate who sometimes act like she is better than, or he is better than everyone else? Okay, let's start with our story. It's called The Buried Treasure. There was once an elderly man who had worked hard all his life and had saved quite a bit of money, which he kept in a box. He had a young son who he loved very much, and he had a beautiful young wife. He thought to himself as he looked at her, When I die, surely she will marry another man and spend all my money that I work so hard for, and then my son will inherit nothing. I'm getting old now. I must hide the money from my wife and somehow make sure my son gets it when he's old enough. But how should I do this? Hmm. I could bury my money and, and tell someone who I can really trust where it is, and then he could tell my son where to find it. Ah, my dear loyal servant, Nanda. Nanda! Yes, Master, what can I do for you? My dear Nanda, let's go for a walk in the forest today. I have something very important to do. Bring a shovel. We must get back quickly before my wife gets home. He took Nanda with him and they walked deep into the forest. The elderly man stopped under a big tall tree and Nanda dug a deep hole under the tree. They placed the box of money in the hole and buried it and then scattered some leaves over the fresh dirt. Then the elderly man said, My dear Nanda, I know you are a loyal and obedient person. When I die, you must give all this money in the box to my son but you must keep this a secret until I pass away. You must advise my son to use the money wisely and be generous. Some time later, the elderly man passed away, and years later, his son finished school and then returned home. He was now the man in charge of the family. One day, his mother said to him, You know, son, your father was a very suspicious man. He hid all his money, and the closest person to him was Nanda. So you should ask Nanda where all the money is. Then you can get married and support all of us. Okay, Mother. Nanda! Do you have any idea where Father put our money? Yes, Master. I know exactly where he hid it. I can show you. It's in the forest. The son wanted to go right then, so Nanda brought a shovel and a basket, and they walked together deep into the forest. They walked silently for a long time. Nanda humbly walked along, leading the way, and clearing thorn bushes and overgrown branches from their path, so the son could walk easily without getting scratched. Then, suddenly, Nanda changed. He walked under some tree branches, which snapped back into the son's face. Nanda stood still, and his face looked very arrogant. He said to the sun, It's too hot out here, and so many insects. <coughs> you know, you're just the son of a servant girl. Why would you have any money here? <sighs> the sun was shocked. He thought, What? I've never seen Nanda behave this way. What can I say? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Okay, I guess we'll just go home. And Nanda was thinking, I know the secret of where all that money is. I'm the only one who knows. 
Only I have the power over all that money. <laughs> so they returned home empty-handed. And Nanda acted normally when they got back, as if nothing happened. Several days later, Nanda was talking pleasantly to the son about his father. Ah, oh, how I miss your father. Such a kind and generous man. I used to bring him his tea right here on the veranda every morning. Here, Master, here is your tea. Thank you, Nanda. Yes, I miss Father very much, too. Nanda, you know where Father hid the money in the forest, right? Let's go find it today. Oh, yes, of course, Master. I'll go get the shovel. So Nanda willingly led him into the forest, carrying the shovel and the basket. But as soon as they arrived in the same area of the forest, Nanda's face changed again as he thought of how important he was with the power over all that money. He looked at the sun as if the sun were a dirty dog and said, So, you had to drag me out here again today. You don't even know how to handle money. Just who do you think you are? You're nothing to me. I don't care what you want. I'm going home. <laughs> Nanda then turned around and started walking home. The son shook his head in disbelief and thought, I can't believe this. What has happened to him? So the son followed him home. Again, when they returned home, Nanda acted perfectly normal, kind and helpful. A couple of weeks later, when Nanda seemed to be in a particularly helpful and pleasant mood, the son asked, Nanda, it's such a beautiful day for a walk. Shall we go find Father's money today? And Nanda happily agreed and brought the shovel in the basket. So Nanda and the son again walked deep into the forest. But when they got to the same area, Nanda started looking around irritably and scowled. Look, you, I'm sweating, and I'm sick of walking out here. I should be taking a nap right now. Why do you bring me out here again? You're wasting my time. <sighs> he started walking back home. The son thought, this is so strange. At home, Nanda is normal. Why does he change his attitude like that? And again, they walked home empty-handed. The next day, the son went to talk to a wise old friend of his father. The son described what happened and asked what to do about it. His father's friend said, The spot where Nanda is standing when he talks abusively is the place where your father's money is buried. Go again with Nanda into the forest and watch where he stands. When he starts talking abusively, send him away, saying, You can leave. You have no right to speak to me that way. Then, when he leaves, dig into the ground exactly on the spot where he was standing and you'll find the money right there. Well, why does Nanda behave so strangely? Nanda has a weakness. When he gets close to power, he becomes arrogant. That's what happens to many people when they've not had much power before. Often, when a person suddenly becomes powerful, he abuses his power. The son did exactly as the wise old man said, and he found the money that his father had hidden. He used it wisely to take care of his family's needs, and he was very generous, giving money to help needy people. And that's the end of our story. So now I've got some questions for you. Why did the father bury his money? to hide it from his wife, right? And why did the father tell Nanda about it? So Nanda could tell the son when he gets older. 
When the father died and the son asked Nanda about the father's money, was Nanda willing to show him where the money was? Yes. And when they arrived at a certain spot in the forest, what happened? Nanda became arrogant and wouldn't tell the son where the money was. And why did Nanda act so arrogantly? Because he felt that finally he was important because he had some power over something and he had a weakness of abusing power. So let's listen to some words that the Buddha said. The Buddha said, If someone thinks, I want people to know that this good work was done by me, or people should always follow my advice, this is the ambition of a fool which makes his desires and arrogance increase. So let's talk about what we mean by the word arrogant. Can you think of some synonyms or similar words? How about egoistic, conceited, haughty, self-centered, show-off, or know-it-all? They're all words that are similar to arrogant. Arrogant people act like they're better than others, and they like to show off the nice things that they have and show off what they're good at. They want to make others do what they want and to follow their advice. They don't just like to follow along with what others want them to do. And many arrogant people don't like to be told what to do, but they love to tell others what to do. They expect to be given special attention, to be admired, and to be popular. So people who are arrogant often have thoughts like, we're going to do this my way, not your way, and I don't want to listen to you, and I'm much better than you. I know a lot more than you do. Arrogant people might also think, I'm more important than you. I should get the good stuff, not you. I don't want to be seen with someone like you. So what is the opposite of arrogance? It's called humility or being humble. And what does that mean? It means appreciating the talents and the success of others and noticing your own weaknesses. So how do people become arrogant? In the story, Nanda became arrogant when he came close to power, close to the money that would give him the power to buy what he likes and to be respected and have a higher status. See, because he never had much money before. He'd been a servant all his life with people telling him what to do all the time. People treated him like he wasn't important and not intelligent. He thought that with money he would have freedom that he could tell other people what to do and he could finally be the big boss. So when he thought he had power over the buried money, he started acting like he was the big boss. Similarly, some people become arrogant when they get a lot of money, or become popular, or become a leader, or have something special that others don't have. And some are arrogant because they just want to control others, or they never learned how to be humble. So let's check and see if arrogant feelings might arise in ourselves sometimes. When you have something really good, Do you ever kind of hope that others will be jealous? Were you ever in charge of something and you love telling others what to do? Have you ever bossed around your sister or brother more than usual when you had a friend over at your house? When something goes wrong, do you tend to blame others rather than yourself? Do you feel annoyed when others don't admire what you do? Do you stay away from classmates who are shy or not popular or have a disability or from a poor family? Maybe you could be having arrogant thoughts in those situations. Of course, sometimes you're really good at something. Maybe you're even the best at something. Or at some point, you might be a leader and you have to tell others what to do. And sometimes people are going to admire you or admire what you have. And maybe you are popular. It's good to be confident to know that you can do something really well and that you're smart. But you have to notice when confidence starts to become arrogance. Try to notice honestly when you might be trying to show off to others what you have or what you can do. Try to notice when you hear your voice kind of sounding bossy. Notice when you say even to yourself, I don't care how they feel. Also notice when you're trying to get all the good stuff only for yourself or when you're thinking only about what getting what you want and not giving others a chance. And Try to notice more what others might be feeling, what they might need, what they would like. For example, you might say, you can go first if you like, or 
Would you like to join us? And be willing to listen more and accept others' ideas and learn from them. Be a leader who wants to help others, not boss others around. And notice other people's talents and skills, the things that they're good at, the good things about them, and the good ideas that they have, and appreciate that. Don't worry about whether you're better or not. And, and don't try to look for their mistakes or their weaknesses. When it's appropriate, tell them things like, Hey, you did really well. That was great. Beautiful. That's a great idea. They'll really appreciate that. And then everyone is happy. So now let's wish that everyone in all the worlds be happy and peaceful.